Good evening. Oh, I feel a bit low down. Oh. <laughs> Is anybody there? Oh, I don't know if anybody's there. Whether my Facebook Live's playing me up again. Oh, no, it's not. Hi, Sylvia. <laughs> I was getting a bit worried then in case my Facebook Live was playing me up. I'm not sure if I'm... Oh, yes, I am. I'm getting comments as well. I had a very strange um, kind of um, experience when I started this live. Just something came up on the screen that didn't look like it normally looks. And so I was a bit concerned whether I'd actually got... Oh, I've got all sorts of reflections in my glasses. Take them off. Um, whether I'd actually got live set up properly or not. Anyway, it looks like I have. So welcome, Lorna and Sylvia, to start with. Anyway, I can see you both. So hi, and thank you for joining me. I'm just giggling a bit because I thought I was going to be late. Um, I nipped off just to have a word with Andrew about something, and he'd made me a cup of tea, so it'd be rude not to bring it with me. So I'm going to have a few sips of my cup of tea. And I hope you're all suitably fed and watered for this evening. I'm going to try not to spend too much time online as, um, our, well, our evenings are precious, aren't they? And um, the demonstration I'm going to do this evening, oh good, I can see some comments coming through now. So I thank you everyone, but I've taken my glasses off so I can't read them. <laughs> That's my excuse anyway. Um, yes, yeah, so the demonstration this evening is going to be a continuation of my lunchtime um, demo. Although that isn't to say that if you didn't see the lunchtime demo, that this evening won't make sense. Because it will make perfect sense. It'd be absolutely fine. But it's kind of uh, same but different, because that's my catchphrase. But before we begin, I'm going to say happy February to everybody. And um, I hope that the month is, is happy for you so far, a couple of days in. It's a new month. It's, um, it's a continuation of celebration. So from, from a Stamping Up perspective, we've got one more month left of, of this early celebration. We will be having another celebration promotion in the summertime in July and August. But this is your last month to grab some free items from um, Stamping Up. So just a very quick recap, for every £45 you spend, you qualify to earn a free item. And those free items, excuse me, leaning over, you can choose are from the celebration booklet. If you haven't got one of these celebration booklets, please message me and I can pop one in the post to you. So for every £45 that you spend, you will qualify for one celebration item there are a couple of items in there that are larger so if you spend 90 pounds obviously two lots of 45 you can choose one of the larger items one of which is a stamp set with a pack of paper and one is a larger stamp set just a more detailed stamp set but everything else in that brochure you can qualify to to earn for free for every 45 pounds and I keep emphasizing that word every 45 pounds because if you place an order for 150 pounds then you'll qualify for three celebration items and you will also qualify for some stamping rewards so you get to um, spend an extra 10 percent of your order total on for free um, on free free items from any of the catalogues for from Stamping Up. So I'm waffling now. Because there's always a lot of detail to explain with Stamping Up offers, because we do have some brilliant offers all the time. One of those offers is during February, as it's the last month, you have a chance to join my team of Crafty Bees. If you're interested, I don't want you to panic and think that that means that you have to do lives like this or demonstrate Stamping Up. In becoming a Stamping Up demonstrator and joining my team, really, if you just think of the word demonstrator as being agent, then you are entitled to get um, things from Stampin' Up! products from Stampin' Up! at a discounted rate. So that would be your demonstrator discount. Now, if you only bought items for yourself and didn't do any selling, 
then you still qualify for that discount. So it's really worth thinking about. And if you're at all interested in joining my team and want to have a longer private conversation about what it all entails, what it might mean for you, how you might make it work, then please don't hesitate to get in touch and we can have a conversation in person. But a quick summary of how you join my team and what it costs during February for £99 you get your demonstrator starter kit and that kit just basically means that you choose £130 worth of product from any of the current catalogues so you're already saving £31 and during the, the month of February the last month of celebration you will also receive five packs of designer series paper six inch by six inch packs and that's one for every colour family so brights regals subtles neutrals and the current um in colour family not the new in colour family and they're the brand new designs of the designer series paper each pack is worth £10.75 so that's over £50 worth of designer series paper which is just wow so much designer series paper fantastic so it's a great bargain but like I say no obligation if you're in, at all interested in getting that bargain um, pack of goodies then be a kidnapper and think about joining my team but just drop me a message we can have a conversation with absolutely no obligation I'm sure we'll have a, a good old chin wagon talk about crafting as well so three things that have made me happy this week and then we'll get on crafting I got a beautiful bouquet of flowers through the post from my mum I'm sure you've all seen the post it was last week um, and that just made me so emotional I'm such an emotional person but thank you mummy love you and they're still blooming beautifully in my hallway the freezers have opened and they smell beautiful I got happy mail from Debbie she sent me a gorgeous card and the sunshine yesterday was amazing what a different day today I spent eight hours in the garden in the sunshine yesterday and it was fabulous so that's what's made me happy now what's also making me happy is the fact that you've joined me this evening so let's get on and make this card I'm going to show you how to do um, a reflection technique so at lunchtime we did a mirror image technique and I'm going to do very much a similar technique but it's going to be a reflection as if the image was reflecting in water so let me just pop my glasses on and spin my camera around and let's get on with this Bear with me for the wibbly wobblies. Here we go. Let's get you pointing downwards and get you levelled up a bit. I think I also might need to bring in an extra lamp. I'm going to just start off and see if this light's good. If you have any issues with the lighting, just drop me a comment and I'll pop an extra lamp on. It's just that my lamp normally sits here and I've got quite a bit of equipment on my desk. Um so as always if you're going to shop online with me during february please use this host code if your order is between 25 pounds and 150 pounds and i will send you a free gift in march if your order goes over 150 pounds please consider joining my team because you will get um, really great value from that starter kit that will only cost you 99 pounds and um well we can have a chat about it if you're really not interested but you still want to spend 150 pounds then you will get some freebies and be prompted to enter them please don't use this code because i'd like you to get the freebies that you've earned yourself so that's great fantastic as always so in this session i'm going to show you how to do a reflection technique so it looks like the trees are reflected in the water so rather than mirroring the image side by side like the birds that we did at lunchtime like these looking like they're looking in a mirror at each other we're going to do a reflection so it looks like the trees or whatever it is that you stamp it may not be trees it may be um for example if you've got a stamp of a um a water bird or something you might want to do a reflection of it in the water 
so it's quite a handy technique for doing these landscaping and I'm going to use I'm just going to show you the stamp set that I'm using for this one it's Campology a superb set for um, those tricky to do masculine cards but equally I'm not you know sort of being gender specific I mean I particularly love nature and the outdoors so I really loved this image of the um, binoculars and I really like the tent image as well for um, obviously campology for outdoors type cards and I'm just going to share with you a, a card that I've just made for my brother and I know he won't be watching so I'm not spoiling anything it's his birthday on the 15th and he's really into the outdoors and camping and walking so I made this card for him using that set so just to give you an idea I really love using our ink and watercolour paper to do watercolour type images so I'm going to share a little bit of that watercolouring technique as well this evening so I'm going to use the Stamparatus which we used at lunchtime but for this one we're going to use that reflecting downwards so I'm just going to pop that to one side for a moment and I'm going to cut some cardstock so I've used some watercolour cardstock as my main for my main image and you'll notice that that stamping is less detailed than the bird stamping and the reason for that and I'm stressing this because I've just answered a question elsewhere about this is the bird was stamped with a really fine ink on very smooth paper and I'm going to hold it even closer because I want you to see that when I did the reflection um, sorry the mirrored image my second bird was slightly fuzzy not quite as crisp as my first bird and that's because it's a transferred image rather than a direct stamped image so I just want you to be encouraged to practice and practice um, you may well still get um, a slightly blurry image for your second image but in terms of the overall finished card I think you'll agree that that technique is really useful and so if, again if I hold this card right up close and try and hold it still you'll see that because I've used a textured paper and a different kind of ink um, you'll get a softer image so let's have a look at that I'm going to get my trimmer and I'm going to make this layer I'm going to make this layer 13 I think let me just double check I always have to double check my numbers oh no 14 okay I'm going to make this layer 14 and that should be by nine and a half and that's for my watercolour paper and I will mat and layer it up once we've finished but I'm going to crack on with the technique because that's what you're all here for so for the moment I'll put my trimmer to one side I'm going to have a little sip of my delicious tea because he who must be obeyed made it for me and it'd be rude not to so let's pop my original card to one side the other pieces of um, equipment I'm going to use this evening are my set of water brushes from stamping up I've got a jar of clean water next to me um, I've also got three ink pads so I'm only using two colors on this card I'm going to use some balmy blue and I'm going to use some crumb cake and then I'm going to use some um, espresso early espresso dark brown for the sentiment so the first thing um, actually the way I st I'm just going to explain the way I stamped this one when I made this sample yesterday evening was I actually started with my tree image and did the reflection and then I put the background sky on last so it's exactly the same way that I'm going to make it this evening the other option that you have is to sponge a background and then stamp the image next or you can use your blender brushes and blend a background or you could indeed lay down a watercolour background the reason I chose to put my background sky on last was simply because the more wet the cardstock becomes the more um, um, it bends and it um, distorts so you'll see that as we go along so I want to get straight on with the technique 
to start with. So I'm going to bring my stamparatus back in. And I don't know whether you're tomato, tomato, stamparatus, stamparatus, but I'm from Yorkshire, so it's a stamparatus. My friends call it stamparatus, but I would say if I was in the gym, I would not use the gymnasium apparatus. I would use the apparatus. So <laughs> you can giggle away. I don't care. Now, what I'm going to do, here's a tip. If you do have a stamparatus, is pop an ink pad underneath, and that will mean that this platform this plate is laying perfectly flat and the reason I say that is when you come to ink your stamp you can ink it and less will um, will go onto the plate so I'm going to put my piece of watercolour cardstock right in my stamparatus right up to the top right hand corner and I've just chosen that as my anchor position I could choose to position it in the middle anywhere I liked but I find for lining up a corner is really great because I'm just butting it straight up against the corner I've just realized something as I'm talking that I haven't turned off my notifications so I'm hoping that I don't get any text messages because it will make a noise apologies if we do I'll turn it off so um, before I started, I actually positioned my stamp where I wanted it. So in, in doing that, I actually have my stamp loose. I'm just going to demonstrate with another stamp and I'll use the, the gas lantern from the stamp set. So I actually decided where I wanted my stamp and I popped it down and then I closed the lid and then the sticky cling stuck to the lid and my stamp was in position. I've not taken it off because I thought, why would I need to? So it's in position. You can see that I want the top of the tree to have a little bit of gap. And I've not got a completely asymmetrical. So I haven't got all of the trees, the space for all of the trees to be reflected. If I bring back in my original, you can see that that doesn't matter because we've got a shorter foreground than we have main horizon, main um, view, if I can use that word. I think that's what I mean. Because I'm butting the cardstock right up in the corner and I know I want to lift it and turn it, I'm not going to use my magnet to anchor it. So I'm just going to go straight on and stamp it. So now I'm going to ink my stamp and I'm using crumb cake. It's quite a juicy stamp and I'm just going to close down the lid. And this is a red rubber cling mount stamp. So as you know, with red rubber cling mount, you have this layer of sponge between the red rubber and the cling sticker. So we've got that sponginess. So I know I'm going to get really good contact um, between the ink and the paper. So I've stamped my trees and my main image. If I felt I wanted to um, darken that or give it more emphasis, then I could add some more ink. There was still some ink left on the stamp and I put some pressure here because I noticed this tree hadn't stamped very clearly and neither had the um, trunks of this main tree. So I'm happy with this image now. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to introduce a piece of um, like clear flexible, not clear, opaque flexible plastic. Now, Debbie Keating, I know you're watching and you asked me a technical question this afternoon following my lunchtime demonstration. Could you use the Stampamajig, which was a tool Stampin' Up! used to retail a few years ago? And yes, you can use the plastic. This is actually exactly what that is. This is the plastic sheet from the, the Stampamajig tool. I don't any longer have the Stampamajig positioning tool um, because I think I gave that away to somebody and I can't remember who. Um, but the plastic is perfect for this technique. It has a slightly textured side and a very smooth side. So I would suggest that you use the smooth side. So what I'm going to do now is remove this piece and replace it with my smooth piece of plastic. And I'm going to re-ink this and stamp the plastic. But before I do, I want to take a note of where my shoreline is on the other side because I'm going to flip, if you remember, I'm going to flip this, and this time instead of flipping it this way to mirror, I'm going to flip it this way to reflect. 
So I need to know where my shoreline is on the other side of the card. So what I'm going to do is hold it up to my lamp. Now what I should have done was get myself a torch to shine through to show you. But I'm going to hold it up to my lamp and I'm going to draw a line with a pencil just across. So now on the back I've got this line going across. So I know that when I, when I flip my card I can line this line up with the shore line so I know I'm going to get a mirror or a reflection from top to bottom I hope that's making sense so just pop that piece to one side re-ink my stamp it will all come clear re-ink my stamp nice and juicy make sure that this piece of plastic is butted right up into that corner stamp the ink onto the plastic, make sure it's still in position, take my original and I'm going to reflect it, I'm going to make note of this line and line it up, I can either use the stamp here, so I'm looking across just with my eye, or I can look at the line on the stamparatus, this line here, and I can line it up with this line across. So, carefully does it. I nearly dropped it then. And drop that down. And press down. Now I'm using the pressure of a finger. If you've got a speedball brayer, one of the rubber brayers, you can use that as well. And I'm going to lift it carefully. And we should have a reflection. Now if we want an, any more ink... If we want to make that darker, we can go ahead and make that darker. I'm quite happy with this because I'm looking at reflecting into water. So I'm quite happy with it being quite a pale. Um, I'll hold it up a little bit. Let me hold it steady. So it's quite a pale reflection. Rather than the bird where I wanted a clear mirrored image, with this one being a reflection, I'm going to turn it into a waterside watercolour painting I'm happy with this level of ink but bear in mind the benefit of the stamparatus is that you could re-ink this stamp again and you could go again and you would know that it would be um, stamping in exactly the same position which is the absolute benefit of using the stamparatus so I'm just going to pop my stamparatus to one side now if you want to um, stick with me for the rest of the demonstration what I'm going to do now is turn show you how I turn this image into a watercolour painting so it looks like a bit of a watercolour painting I've not got quite as many people watching tonight so I'm wondering whether you're just tuning in to get the technique and if you've got the technique and you're happy with that I'm happy too and just bear with me I just had a drink so I'm going to use my um water brushes these are in the main catalogue and you get three in a pack you get one with a wide brush one that's a very fine brush and one that's a medium brush so I'm going to use all of those and I'm going to bring in my balmy blue ink pad I just need to double check what's in shot and yes we're okay we're good and I'm also going to reach for a piece of kitchen roll which I always like to have in my hand whenever I'm doing any watercolours just so I can control the wetness on the page. Now this water painter I used earlier in the week for a project and I actually filled the body of the brush with water. You can see that inside. I don't often fill my water painters because I like to use this kind of kiddie painting approach please excuse me, um, and just use the water. I find it a bit more controllable. Now I'm going to squish some ink into the lid by squeezing the ink pad together. And some of these ink pads are stiffer than others. So if you struggle to do that, you can always wet your brush a bit and just use the very edge of your ink pad to pick up some ink. It's not quite as controllable and you will dilute your um, ink pad so just be careful doing that of course if you've got the re-inker bottle you can squeeze a few drops and use this as a palette so I'm going to make this quite watery and I'm going to do a very light watery wash for the sky so quite 
Um, I'm going to need that over there out of the way. I'm going to go start going right the way across. And just work very quickly. And up to the trees as much as you can, but without actually touching the trees. Because bear in mind, I've stamped this with a water-based ink, crumb cake, and it's going to smudge. So I'm going to work very quickly around with this broad brush, which I absolutely love. I'll try and turn my paper so you can, my hand's not covering. And I'm taking that down to where I think the shoreline is. Just because it's got a nice broad brush, I can get into, I'm not leaving too much of a halo, and I've got myself a reasonably nice sky. Now, if I wanted to put some clouds in the sky, I could take my um, kitchen paper and I could actually just dab that and blot away some of the ink there and make that look like there's a bit of an impression of a cloud, but without wanting to sound like Bob Ross. Um, pretending that I'm a proper artist, which I'm not. So I've cleaned off my broad brush. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the crumb cake ink and we're going to get a bit of an impression of reflection. So I've got some crumb cake squished into the lid. And again, with this broad brush, what I'm going to do is just pick up some of that and I'm going to start with my shoreline. I want to look at my horizon and I'm going to pull my brush just across as simple as that and I'm going to start just by pulling it down and to start with I'm going to try not to smudge my stamped image too much but just pull that ink down and now just tickle it across really gently I'm hardly putting any pressure on this brush whatsoever and I'm working across And I can darken these corners. You know, if I had a sponge dauber, I might darken those corners. And just bring that across. Try not to think about it too much, actually. Work fairly quickly. So now I've got an horizon. And with this brush, with this broad brush, I can just feather that a bit so it sort of starts to look a bit like... Maybe there are some bushes or grass or something. And just smudging that. So the more water you add, you're going to be able to smudge this ink that you've stamped. So I can put some darker ripples across if I want. Just a few here and there. I can darken the horizon even more. So it gives a bit more differentiation. Just gives a bit of an impression maybe of an island or a, the bank of a, a lake. And that's about as much as I'm going to faff. I might just drag that brush across as it's drying. I'm not going to faff too much with it. And one thing I did do just to finish off and give a bit more differentiation was I took the very fine water brush, just dampen it ever so slightly and use your kitchen paper just to control the dampness. And I'm going to give these trees a little bit more definition. I'm going to actually just see what difference it makes by dragging that damp brush down the trunks. Not enough for me, so I'm going to pick up some ink. So start pale and then work your way to a bit more darkness. So I'm going to just take a little bit more ink and just fill in those tree trunks just to give it a bit more definition. And I'm hoping that by demonstrating this, you can see how Some of these stamps are really easy to use. You get some really good results without having to be an artist, 
without too much effort, stamped just in one colour, that kind of sepia tone, and you can add a little bit more definition. Now, if I wanted to add some green, I actually could add a little bit of green, um, and in fact, I might just try that um, without spoiling it, hopefully. I could go for a little bit of old olive, and just squish a little bit of that in the lid, and maybe go for the medium brush. And let's have a look. Barely damp. And just pick up the tiniest bit of green. And if I go in, start at the bottom and just, again, almost tickling, just touching these trees. I'm almost not touching the, I'm going to bring this up to the camera so it's a bit closer. I'm going to just fill in almost the areas that don't have any colour with green, but just by tickling with that ink. And I hope the camera can pick that up. So I'm just going to work around very quickly not taking up too much time and just add a hint of green and I'm not sure whether that will bring this more alive or whether it was fine to start with but at the end of the day when you have this kind of stamp set with this kind of very realistic image line drawing image I always think it's just useful. Oh, I'm just unscrewing my, my um, brush there. It's really useful just to have an experiment, really. Just have a play and see what they look like, see what kind of results you get. Because at the end of the day, it's only a bit of paper. You've nothing to lose. And I will share with you that I did three or four of this card design just yesterday evening before I settled on one that I was really happy with, this one. On one of them I felt I put too much detail added and sometimes it just goes right. Like the card for my brother just went right didn't take me very much time at all now I've just I'm going to stop there because I've just added that tiny bit of green I'm just going to bring that back up to the camera just that tiny bit of green and I think that just adds to it so hopefully I'm going to close my ink pads that's demonstrated in a very short space of time it's not even half past seven yet and I've done my introduction welcomed everybody had a little chat, shown you the technique using the Stamparatus and done some finishing touches to the watercolour effect. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish the card off by layering it up, matting it up and popping a sentiment on and I hope you'll stick around to the end of the video and I hope you're having a cup of tea with me. I'm having a cup of tea here. Who's got a drink and what are you drinking? Go on, your secret's safe with me. I know it's only Tuesday, but, you know, if you're having a little tipple, I don't mind. Now I'm going to use um, Balmy Blue again for my main card. So I'm going to bring my trimmer back in. And as always, I'll talk you through the measurements. I'm just going to say hello to a couple of ladies who've joined me because I've stood up and I can see your comments. Hello, Michelle. And hello, Mary. Two new viewers, two new followers. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you're enjoying this very quick demonstration this evening. Sometimes my demos are a lot longer. Sometimes they're called a make-along. And if I do a make-along, I'll usually put a post up in the afternoon or earlier in the day and suggest some materials for you to gather and I've just realised that I've just cut that and not told you the measurement so I took my piece of A4 
and I cut that at 15 centimetres and then I turned it around and I scored it at 10 and a half centimetres to make my standard card blank. I'm now going to make myself a mat using soft suede cardstock. I felt when I did this card yesterday evening that that just didn't pop and it looked much better with a mat of soft suede. So here we go and I've got another tip for you. So my soft suede layer, oh I've just popped out my my um, scoring too. Let me just get that ready. So my soft suede layer is going to be 14 by, I think, is it going to be 14? Gosh, I've measured. Where's my ruler? I'm off on one this evening. What's wrong with me? It should be 14 and a half. Let's pull in the other layer. Right, here we go. 14 and a half. And it's going to be by 10, surely. By 10. <laughs> check and double check. If you follow me regularly, you will know that me and numbers, me and pictures and me and patterns get on. But me and numbers, I have to double check everything. So that's good. I've got my mat and my lane. I'm just going to give you a tip. Can you spot on my original that I've um, punched my sentiment and I've punched a layer so I'm going to get that punch and before I stick this to this mat I'm going to punch myself not punch myself but I'm going to punch a label because frugal crafter I'm not going to see this once this is over the top so there you go there's a little tip you're not going to see this once this is over the top so if you're going to use a label that you're going to punch, punch it from your layer. There's a little tip for you frugal crafters out there. And I'm going to stamp um, simple happy birthday in early espresso. And my happy birthday, I wanted a small sentiment for this because I didn't want to cover up the beautiful reflection that we've spent time making. So I wanted a small sentiment and I used the timeless tulips that just happened to have a really nice hand sort of written happy birthday. So I've just popped that on a block. Now because this is a photopolymer stamp, I'll be able to position this nice and straight if I could find some cardstock. There we go. I've got a scrap of white here. And the reason I've chosen to use early espresso rather than black is because I felt that the colours on this card were quite nice and soft and natural. So early espresso dark brown is just a little bit more soft than harsh black. So stamped that and I'm going to use the same punch, a little label punch. And it wouldn't have mattered which way around I'd stamped that, whether it had been wonky or straight, because I'm using a punch, which is why I chose not to go back in with the Stamparatus again. But if you want to see my tip about getting um, your sentiments using red rubber cling stamps really straight, using the Stamparatus, go back and watch my lunchtime demonstration, which was equally quick, and I share with you a tip for getting your sentiment straight on a strip of card that you've already cut to size. Now I'm going to just stick it all together and the card will come alive. So first thing I'm going to do is stick um, stick my picture to my layer and I'm going to, for that I'm actually going to use Stamp and Seal Plus because my watercolour card stock is quite thick. In fact this one that I did yesterday evening um, warped quite a bit and so I dried it with my heat tool. So I'm going to use this um, Stamp and Seal Plus which is a nice strong tape runner. So let's get that on this mat. And then I'm going to use my favourite multi-purpose wet glue, our Tombow, and as always I run a bead around the edge and a squiggle in the middle. You don't need a lot, it's a nice strong glue Tombow, um, and the reason that it's my favourite type of glue when a wet glue is <clears throat> 
is useful is because you get a bit of wiggle room and if you're not good at you know maybe you've got bifocal glasses sometimes they're a bit of a hindrance when you're trying to stick things straight or maybe if you've got um, dexterity issues with your hands to use a wet glue where you get a bit of wiggle room you know a bit of reposition you can actually move it around a bit once you've popped it down it's a useful glue to use let me just pop that there so I'm going to give you another little tip I'm sure I've done this before but if you're new to watching me I'm going to use I've used exactly the same label punch but I want to put my soft suede piece behind so I'm just going to cut it in half and I'm going to put some wet glue pop that in the middle and you can see I'm going to put some wet glue just on each end leave a little gap in the middle for me to hold it and I'm going to pop that label behind and this is really when the wiggle room comes in so now I can slide that until I've got just the right amount showing and the same on this end I can just pop it on but slide it until I've got just the same equal amount showing on this end and give it a bit of a press and hold And that will just make it pop from the base and I'm going to use some mini dimensionals some of the small mini dimensionals now I could consider adding some extra embellishments maybe some twine but I felt that for a masculine card this was this was absolutely fine I think that's got enough detail with just that sentiment in that corner I'm quite happy with that I'm going to pop that on there just with a couple of these mini dimensionals they just fit perfectly let's be extravagant and pop one in the middle as well again if you know me if you've been to any of my classes in person obviously pre 2020 you'll know that I'm a less is more person when it comes to using sticky pads make sure that that's on straight hopefully there we go that's what I would call my ta-da moment, or as my friend Alison would say, stick a fork in it, call it done. I do like that saying, she does make me laugh. So let's have a look. They are the same, slightly different. This one's no green on it, simply two colours, crumb cake and balmy blue. You can tell, if I hold that very steady, hopefully you can tell with this watercolour that I've used much more water than I did on this one and I'm hoping that the camera can pick out oh it's very subtle I'm just looking through the lens at the back where I dabbed here I've got the impression of a cloud in the sky and it was a very simple and very quick watercolour technique but I hope you enjoyed learning how to do this reflection technique and at lunchtime the mirror technique using the stamparatus Thank you, Fanny, for saying that. That's lovely to see you joining me this evening. Um, yes, thank you, Sylvia. You should try this one as well. Um, have a go and have a think about the different inks and just what I've said about the different inks. So this one was a very fine ink. So what I mean by fine ink, Memento is actually um, a dye-based ink, so it stamps quite fine. It's got a nice... Um, oh I can't think of the word to describe it it's just a finer ink on the stamp and this ink stamp um, classic stamping stamping pad ink is a water-based dye ink so it's actually um, much less fine and the two different paper types so I used um, on this one it was actually um, whisper white which is a very smooth cardstock and this is a watercolour cardstock so a much more textured and much more absorbent cardstock so you do get two very different image results so lovely okay I'm going to just whiz you back around and say good evening and I'm going to let you all go in a moment let me just turn you back around and take a seat on my squeaky chair 
and I'm back in the room with my reflective glasses. Sorry, I'll take those off and then I'm not glaring you. So thank you so much for joining me this evening. Hopefully those two techniques today, they're nothing new. YouTube will be full of videos showing exactly the same techniques and hopefully I've added something to um, the multitude of demonstrations using the Stamparatus or Stamp Positioning tool from Stampin' Up. Um, just by talking you through the difference between the two inks and the different paper types to get the two different results. And I really want to encourage you to have a go. If you haven't got a stamp positioning tool, then you know exactly where to come to get one. You can shop online with me and the Stamparators really is a really great investment. If you don't have many blocks, many block sizes in your craft room, then it's also just a really great tool to buy because you do get um, those two uh, stamping platforms, stamping plates. I'm just going to grab one quickly. You get two of these with your stamparatus, which means you've got four different sides. So you've got four different areas for stamping, and you know you'll always have a block the right size because the plates are so big. So great stuff. So thanks again for joining me. Hopefully, you're all safe and well and um, cosy on this very chilly evening. I don't know what it's like where you are. We've had snow today. It's now absolutely throwing it down with heavy rain. Um, and so I hope you're all staying cosy and safe and warm at home. Stay calm, stay safe, but most of all, keep crafting. Don't stop crafting. Lots of love to everyone. And please do show me the results that you get when you've had a go at these reflection and mirroring techniques. I'd love to see what you um, what, what results you get. Brilliant. Thank you ever so much. Bye bye for now.